What's up guys, this is Alex and today is going to be a little different video. We're going to play in the computer again. As you know, I have a monitor called Argus monitor, which monitor my heat in my computer and tells me the temperatures of the components that I want to see. So normally I watch for the processor, the graphic card and one of my hard drive, which is actually an SSD drive. It's actually the fastest SSD drive M.2 that you could buy at that time which is about at the end of 2021. There's one thing with that SSD drive. There's two versions of it. There's one without a heatsink and one with the heatsink. Since this is the fastest SSD drive you could buy and there's no heatsink on it at that time, it can run hot a little bit. That's why I'm watching it. So I did a quick test and let's see the test how hot it's getting. But before that, why would you need a heatsink on an SSD drive? Usually those chips, those SSD cells should not go over 70 degrees Celsius. If you go over that, your product may last less longer. So the lowest the temperature is at all time, the better longevity. And in some rare occasion, while probably Windows Search was indexing my drive, those degrees were going way higher than I thought. 80 degrees Celsius high. So I launched CPU ID monitor, I launched Crystal Disk Mark, and let's do some tests. So while doing that test, and we're gonna see it on the screen, you can see that those values, and I'm gonna highlight them, are getting quite high. At least the performance from the manufacturer is actually there. <laughs> That's good. But as you can see, this is getting very hot, like 82 Celsius hot. And I even saw it go up to 86 when they're gonna do the writing test. And I'm gonna speed up the test. I even had a warning about the drive going too hot. So here you can see it maximum went up to 85 and eventually it's gonna go to 86 boom 86 right here yeah that's not very good for a drive and i also did the test with everyday usage for example i think i was watching a youtube video just to test and as you can see the drive temperature is fine and it's only some specific application that can dry the drive very hot but i still see it from time to time so what i did is i bought a heatsink and it cost eight bucks if you look at the difference price for this drive western digital black sn 850 the difference between without heatsink and with heatsinks is 20 bucks so you buy it for 20 bucks more and you don't have to fingle with the heatsink it's a pre-install and it's fine but in my case let's add the heatsink right away and here is the beast itself and it's so dusty can you see all that dust i'm gonna have to uh, make a quick cleaning here and uh, <laughs> i'll see you after that what is that so here is the gpu this is actually the heatsink which i actually changed in another video before this one and this is the m.2 drive maybe we can zoom in to really see where it is when i bought that drive this was actually the fastest you could buy so this is a ssd drive m.2 and this is the one from western digital and there was this one and there was a one coming soon with a heatsink so i have my m.2 drive right here and this is pretty much a generic heatsink for m.2 drives let's see what's in the box we have some wipes to remove the dirt heatsink top part heatsink lower a small screwdriver five screws and these are heat pads to transfer the heat and of course the instructions basically you're gonna put two thermal pads, one on each side. Put it in here, put that one on top, screw the screws, and it needs to be perfectly aligned so you can actually put that part on your motherboard and use the screw for that section. So one over here, and this is not too much gooey, so you can actually remove it and put it back if you missed. And this should be not too bad. Oh, a light died on me. <laughs> so that's the bottom side, I'm gonna go with the plastic here. That seems reasonable. Just tap, tap, tap a little bit. Oops, I messed up, so I'm gonna try to remove it and put it back again. And yeah, no problem. This should work. Yeah, I didn't use the wipes because it's pretty clean. And I don't think that that's gonna make a difference uh, in degrees or anything. Push, push, but not too much. That's so messy with those fat fingers. You know what they say with people with big hands. It's just harder to get around the motherboard. Screw, 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 screw. That's pretty secure. Let's put it back in the machine. So the heatsink is installed. Let's just run the test to see the difference, if it's different or not. So the speed is the same. That's good. <laughs> hmm, that's kind of interesting because it's stuck at 52 instead. 
So yeah, the other one was already at 75 at that moment. And right now, the one with the heat sink is at 52. That is quite impressive actually. So right now it's at 52 degrees Celsius and the other one was already at 85. And let's wait for the right test just to see the difference. Okay, we're at 55. That's impressive, like really impressive. So the drive with the heatsink went up to 60 and it stopped there. The drive without the heatsink went up to 86. That's a 26 degree Celsius difference. And the only difference is the heatsink. So what about the test on uh, everyday usage? Well, there's actually not really that much difference there. I'm gonna put some graphs here just to show you that there is a difference like high load, low load. Low loads, not that much, but with high loads, wow, that's a huge difference. And that's gonna make your M.2 drive live longer. So in conclusion, for those who bought an M.2 drive without a heatsink, whatever the brand, you can monitor the temperature, right, with any software. So you're gonna see What's the difference and what's the temperature? I think it's a good idea to buy a heatsink. It might give a couple of years more to that and not to drive. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. If you go over that, your product may last less longer. So the long, uh, yeah.